Hey guys, what's up? Hazero back again. As most of you know, I am back to streaming The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and I'm kind of prepping myself for the Blood and Wine DLC. It was supposed to be released the first quarter of 2016, but unfortunately, it got delayed until further notice. Still, there hasn't been any release date, but there have been some interesting developments on the Blood and Wine news. A Reddit user who wishes to stay anonymous has posted leaked information about the Blood and Wine DLC. He said his source was from within CD Projekt Red, but the post was taken down quite swiftly and by the looks of it, <laughs> it looks like the real deal and I must add guys, this is gonna sound really, really epic. So as we all know, Blood and Wine will be adding an entire new continent in Qualivant to The Witcher 2. That's a pretty huge DLC. We will be venturing for the last time as Geralt of Rivia into the province of Toussaint, which is property of the Empire of Nilgard, but strangely left untouched by its firmly grasp. The two screenshots you guys are seeing now are in-game shots from the Toussaint environment and were released by CD Projekt themselves a couple months ago. The required minimum level to start this DLC will be level 40, with of course the option, like in Hearts of Stone, to create a character that starts at level 40. He said the expansion has a Brotherhood of the Wolf vibe, and the Brotherhood of the Wolf is a movie from 2001 playing itself in an 18th century France and is about a duo who hunts down mystery beasts. Blood and Wine will offer two standard endings and one secret ending that will be available only if you did something specific in the main story. New sword, a new bone sword that looks like one from the Brotherhood of the Wolf movie, check out the screenshot. New NPC type, these new NPCs will offer the chain's armor colors and there will be one in each of the major areas, Novigrad, Skellige and Toussaint. There's going to be new skills, with 4 new skills for combat, alchemy and science, 12 new general skills and also 3 skills and 1 extra mutagen slot. Trophies and achievements are going to be reworked, it's something about trophies no longer useless, but give good buffs and the effects your whole gameplay. Now we got new armor, something about Witcher gear will have alternative upgrades for each set. New combat animations and new combat moves, maybe something that has to do with the new skills that are going to be released. New fistfight animations, new drinking decoctations animations, something like in the CGI trailers, links are in the description. Huge combat balance, a balance for the difficulty levels will be harder to play in the later acts, finally. There's going to be a new sign, Heliotrope sign is coming back from The Witcher 2 and will be a bit different and also offer an alternative mode. For the people who don't know what Heliotrope is, Heliotrope allows Geralt to consume his adrenaline points to slow down time around him while time for him moves normally. There's going to be a boss fight rework, we're going to see awesome boss fights like in Hearts of Stone. We will also have one huge boss fight that will be the hardest one ever made, something like the Kraken from The Witcher 2. There's going to be huge graphic changes, something about Toussaint going to have the most complex lightning system, bigger visible distance, reduced fog, better LOD, and basically Toussaint is going to be the most amazing graphic area ever made. The tech changes will only be applied to Toussaint, the other areas will remain the same. Now they're also doing something different with the camera. A new camera setting and FOV setting will ava be available also, CD Projekt Red is now working on a first person mode. Wow. Also, Gwen changes, there are going to be new skills, new cards, new leaders, uh, something about you're going to have double the things to do in Gwent now, it's probably going to be a rework for Gwent. But, to be honest, I don't hope they change much. Now, the release date is early June, the developer said they don't want to push things sooner because they want the fans to miss The Witcher more and more. Development will be over around the end of April and early May, but might be pushed later for release, we're going to see new gameplay movies around the end of May. Now, this was the information that was leaked by the Reddit user, and it looks pretty solid to me. He did say something about the story, well actually he didn't say anything about the story because he didn't want to spoil anything for us, what a great guy. Also, the developer said something about the map size, it was the map grows bigger over time and right now it's around 75% of Novigrad and Velen, and by the end of development it will be even bigger. There is so much epicness going to be introduced in Blood and Wine, it, like a versatile Witcher gear which lets you use modify or Witcher gear sets a lot more, kind of like a better rune ride from the Hearts of Stone DLC, huge graphical changes that are going to make made for the new province, entire new lightning system and a lot of new NPCs and battle animations that are going to be introduced. And I really hope there is going to be a Gwent multiplayer where you can play Gwent versus your friends or pl players around the world. Also, that first person mode. I'm really interested in that. It, it might just give an, another dimension to the Witcher experience, and I hope it's really, really going to work out. 
Again, guys, this info has not been confirmed, but sounds pretty trustworthy since CD Projekt's mods took it down in a matter of minutes. Of course, when there is actual confirmed news, you will hear it from me. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to check out my Witcher live streams on twitch.tv slash hezerotv. And if you liked the video or found it useful, subscribe to me because that will help me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hezero signing off. Peace.